So I'm showing I'm I'm showing all these different things not to um The side effect is that you may try Linux, but the truth is is that these are things you ought to know anyway, whether Linux exists or not. Now, the man I'm talking about, he took ended up taking over a botnet for a couple weeks. Um, that is the current botnet of, of of Vogue and Topic these days, and that happens to be if I can find. papers I had here earlier, and I probably won't. Ah, not going to happen, so. Let's just do this search. Okay, so it was uh, Botnet Santa Barbara. This is a press that works easy. Yeah, how to steal a botnet, and what can happen to you. This Richard Kim... Commercer, Commerer, is a professor at UC Santa Barbara, and in this talk, um, he describes how um, he's able to infiltrate and eventually take over a botnet that was running, oh, probably 60,000 computers, and in addition to that, in the meantime, he was able to find out that these people had terabytes. You know, in the 20 years of business our company that I work for has been in, we have, including the programs that we have installed, and we're talking terabytes of, of raw data that this person uh, was able to discover that these um, internet criminals had, had found, had collected. In the, in the 30 years that we have been collecting our clients' data and preserving and keeping it <coughs> confidential, We've got to maybe 30 gigabytes. A terabyte is a thousand gigabytes, and that includes uh, programs that are that rest on our server. We probably have maybe a gigabyte of raw client data. Well, this this whoever had been collecting data had terabytes worth. It's completely unimaginable how much that they had, and he was at the end of the day he wasn't able to take it down, but he's able to learn some things about it and how it operates. And I think this botnet that he's talking about still, um, <laughs> still is in operation to this day. Now I was also going to look. Um, I was hoping I was going to find <sighs> the other, um, the other presentation that I saw there, but I'll probably just lay off there. All, all I'll say is, is that, you know, uh, as I said, I guess, in my first part of this whole thing, that, you know, your choice of operating system that you use to surf the net is, is, a, is a, a choice of responsibility that you take. And um, just, just to show you, I'm not, you know, I know that the Haiku operating system, if you went out and you got yourself a very inexpensive thumb drive and you uh, put the Haiku operating system on there. There's very, very simple instructions at haikuos.org uh, that allow you to boot uh, the Haiku operating system in less than 10 seconds from that thumb drive. If you have a USB port on your computer, you can surf the net there easily. The only problem you might have is watching YouTube videos, and that's what, that's why you would use Linux. You can download a Linux CD or DVD, uh, like I was discussing in the the part about restoring your data. You can do that very easily, and you you be able to watch your YouTube videos if you want, surf the net, and do everything you would want to do on the net, except for maybe use a Windows Live app. I'm not sure if that'll work. Um, with running running your operating system off running your computer with the operating system that's on the DVD you have there and you'll find there's a lot of good programs in there that you can use just for surfing purposes but for all these uh, for the risk you have out there the risk that you don't even know that you're infected or the fact that you might want to believe you're not infected because there are tools out there that are they're ineffective you may think you're protected by your antivirus program but you're not I have a story that I tell one of the later videos about um, 
about undetected viruses, and I'm telling you, it was, it was very, it was, it was an eye opener for me to happen to me in the first person. So I do suggest uh, that you watch this How to Steal a Botnet and What Can Happen to You. I definitely do. Uh, kudos to this professor, and um, he mentions how he, he's taken a risk to make these presentations, and so I, I you know, I'm not very religious, but God bless him, and, you know, my <laughs> prayers for him, you know. Um, so that's, that's it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a national security issue also with um, the number of computers that are controlled by these botnet herders. They could probably take down some very significant computer systems that help protect this country from our enemies, uh, the world even. So it's not a, not a laughing matter, and everybody's a small piece. I know that uh, my presentation here isn't going to cause every Windows user to start surfing the net with a Haiku USB disk or to go out and buy a Mac or, or to, to use a Windows Live, a Linux uh, Live disk or to try Linux by installing it on their uh, I know it's not going to happen. I know people are going to do what they do every day and they're creatures of habit. That's why this whole botnet thing works, but the least I could do is try to mention it. Um, so uh, that'll be the end for what I have to say today, but it's a very scary topic. Also, if you go to, um, you know, I ha I'm glad I have Linux to serve the net with, frankly. Uh, if you go, if you do a search for the Storm botnet in Wikipedia, <laughs> which I'm doing, there it is. Okay, at the bottom it's going to mention something about a new um, it, it'll explain how um, this whole this whole uh, botnet is is associated with email spam internet crime the whole the whole shebang and and but one thing that was a real eye-opener was seeing that presentation that I pointed out. But also another eye-opener was another presentation that I'm having trouble finding right now that had to do with, um, I think there's this, this botnet. Um, I don't want to lose it here, but I think it was... Um, I can remember what that was. Google search. Malware. Maybe if I restrict it to um, videos, I might get what I want. Search poisoning. It was a presentation at the um, try YouTube. I remember I used the word black hat in there. Trying to, if you go to oh yeah, there's another place to go to. If you go to blackhat.com, um, you could uh, you watch all sorts of very surprising presentations that are taking place. There was an earlier one by Greg Hoagland about how uh, your computer can get rooted. And basically, another point I think I should have I almost forgot to make is that if 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 your computer ever gets compromised. The point is, the point I'm making also is you may not even know it's compromised, and it is, even with the antivirus installed. If your computer gets compromised, then you just, you might, the only thing you really can do to, uh, to recover is to do a reinstall. And what I find that's really dangerous is a lot of these computers only have restoration partitions on them, and you don't have a CD that you can boot from, 
that has the software on there and so of course the malware if it looks for one of these restoration uh, partitions could always bury itself in there and you just can't get you just can't get out of it if you're going to use your windows you're going to have a windows that has been rooted and rooted means that your kernel has been modified with malware and it's going to it's you're going to serve its bidding while you do what you want to do it's a parasite that's just not going to go away so um i wish i knew what that was i wish i knew what that was um But I'm probably not going to find it here, so uh, maybe I'll do a short snippet if I find it, but this is going to be the end of my presentation.